Hey guys, this is Heidi Turner at Bella Casa Realty and I'm just pulling in to the Bridalwood neighborhood and we're gonna go take a look at 139 Bridalwood Drive. So when I do these videos for you, I like to give you, you know, just kind of like a, a little overview of what the neighborhood looks like and the surrounding area. So this is where the house sits in relation to just pulling into the neighborhood. So I'm gonna pull over here and park and show you the house. Okay guys, we are un inside 139 Bridalwood. I'm just gonna show you from the doorway here. We've got a very nice heavy, uh, heavy duty storm door. Very clean. Upon entry, the house smells great. So I said that that's one of the things I always like to pull, uh, point out is that if there's any funky smells in the house and there are none in this one. We've got some accented crown molding up here in the living room. I like the little pops that they've done, very cute. Plantation blinds and the wood floors are very pretty, kind of a Brazilian cherry color. Got a gas logs fireplace over there. Oops, <laughs> just backed right up into the wall. Chair rail molding. I really like the way they've done the fireplace. Now in North Carolina, fixtures are considered TV mounts, curtain rods, and a list of other things that you'll see in the offer to purchase and contract. And we'll go over all of that stuff later too. But right now I'm just gonna give you a tour of the house. Nice little coat closet in there. And this kitchen is absolutely adorable, adorable. We've got espresso colored cabinets, a little lighter than espresso actually, and with crown, rail, um, crown molding on the cabinets. We've got some recessed lighting and some updated light fixtures in here. These beautiful granite countertops and this tile backsplash is absolutely gorgeous. I love the little details in here. A nice gooseneck sink. It does have one of those pull-out faucets. Also plantation blinds in the kitchen, stainless steel appliances. I like the little accents here, just all these little details on the um, outlet covers and light switch covers. Nice eat-in kitchen area here. And I'm gonna walk over here and show you this. This really got me, I love this. This pantry is humongous and I love the way they've put this little shelf area over here with the shiplap to store all of their coffee mugs. That's super cute. You can tell there's been a lot of attention to detail that's gone into this house. They've painted the doors to just really tie in all of the colors together. Got a little half bath in here with some beaded board accent wall and crown molding. Got painted white cabinets. And I'm just going to take a peek on into the garage here. Very nice large garage. So they do have a water tank, um, or I'm sorry, a water heater with an expansion tank on it, like I was mentioning before. And this painted garage floor, this is actually a really nice upgrade to have in such a large space. And I also always like to point out the electrical panel and this is not an older house, so we're not looking for um, Federal Pacific, specifically in a house built in this area. But it does look like they've kept up with their termite contract. The last inspection was in April of this year, so that's a good thing. We've got some garage door openers and a ceiling fan, plenty of area for workspace, and there's also an access to the backyard, which we'll hit after we look at the inside. It's kind of a rainy day today, so I'm gonna keep the outside and the inside showings a little separate. 
And we'll take a look at that beautiful screened in back porch over there too. Plenty of natural light comes through here. House is very clean, very well maintained. Got one of those nest thermostats, that's pretty cool. And that covers us for the downstairs. So I really like that they've taken the wood flooring all the way up the stairs here. That's definitely a nice feature. Just a little cosmetic thing. This could probably be sanded and painted. Not a big issue. And I'm going to show you the hallway there, but first we're going to go to the left. So this is the bonus room. It's got Berber carpet in here. Huge space up here. That TV is enormous. And it looks like they have made good use of this area as a little office slash work area. And it's got tons of storage space in here. This is just one of the, the accesses. And then there's another one on this side. Nope, sorry, this is the laundry room. The other one is on the other part of the room. So nice big laundry room up here. Got tile floors, also plantation blinds up here. I love those sinks, those are cool. Um, the washer and dryer do not convey. Um, that's considered personal property. Technically a refrigerator is considered personal property. And I'm, I'll have to go back and double check the MLS, but I am pretty sure that stays. So we've got these beautiful double French doors here. And then a whole nother little space over here that looks like they are using as a baby room. This closet over here, this is the other one that I was talking about. So lots and lots of space in this, this room. So it's technically kind of two bonus rooms up here. And as we go back down the hallway, we're gonna run into the first bathroom upstairs. Nice tiled floors. That is a tiled bathtub as well. A lot of little detail has been put into this. And we'll walk into the master bedroom, also with the Berber carpet and the painted doors. This is the master bedroom closet. Walking on into the master bathroom. Again, nice little attention to detail with the little backsplash behind the sink and the shelves. Looks like this is a newer toilet. One of those kind of water saving toilets. You have two options when you flush. Now this is a plastic insert shower. It's not the tile like the other one, but also plantation blinds in the master bathroom for your view of the front yard out there. Okay, now we'll go check out the other rooms. There's your other thermostat up here. So that's nice to have two of them for dual zones. There's your return and an attic access. Also Berber carpet in this next bedroom. Always nice to have ceiling fans in the rooms. And 
And this window is cracked a little bit. I just noticed that. I wonder if there's a reason that they have it open, but I'll give you a view from the backyard. And the closet for this bedroom. The other bedroom here, also with Berber carpet and painted doors. The color scheme pretty much is um, the same throughout the house. Nice high ceilings. And then the closet. some shelving on the side there. All right, so now we're gonna take a trip downstairs and I'm gonna go out through the screened porch and out into the backyard and do a walk around. Okay, again, I'm back down here in the kitchen. We've got this lovely door here that leads out to the screened porch. Really nice to have a screened porch on a day like this where it's super rainy. <laughs> Huge fenced in backyard. And there were some notes in the MLS that mentioned some of the items staying with an acceptable offer. The pool was one of them. I believe the place that was another. So we'll look into that. Oh, there's even a little pet door here that goes into the screened area. I think the shed was the other thing. And there we go. Nice concrete patio back out here. Everything from the exterior looks really good. Got a little bit of a warp in the fence there. Looks like just the gate might be leaning some. Swing in the tree. And this is really cool. There's a huge garden area over here. If you like to grow vegetables or whatnot, looks like it's kind of gotten a little bit out there. <laughs> and I believe this is on a septic system. So I would definitely recommend having a septic inspection along with your home inspection. This is more than likely where the septic tank is buried. If you can see how that area over there is raised, but I can always pull public records and find that information out for you. All right, and we're going to swing back out the front door. And I'll give you a tour of the front of the house. All right, now we're back out on the front porch. Nice area to have to sit out in the morning, have coffee, sit in the evening, talk to your neighbors. Got a ring camera system over here, which is considered a fixture unless they exclude it from the contract, which I don't believe I saw any notes on that. So we'll look into that as well. Got a nice two-car garage with dual doors. Nice big driveway and front yard. Got some hostas and some cedar mulch in the front flower beds. That's very pretty. This is really a good looking house. We've got some architectural shingles up there. I'll have to look into the age of the roof, but it looks like it's fairly new and in good shape and just a little surrounding of the area here. And I'm going to do a drive through of the neighborhood too, just so you can kind of see what it looks like around. Okay. So for right now, that is the house and stay tuned for the neighborhood. There is a propane tank over there. That was the one thing I forgot to look at when I was out here earlier. 
just want to kind of show you what the side of the lot looks like. Very pretty. All right. Okay, now we're going to be driving into the neighborhood. So the direction that I'm coming from is immediately, if you remember from the beginning of the video, directly from the entrance of the neighborhood. Sorry for the windshield wipers, guys. <laughs> That's a hazard of trying to do this in the rain. Everybody maintains their yards very nicely around here. It's a quiet neighborhood. And this neighborhood is, it sits just outside of Jacksonville city limits and um, is still very close to everything. So I actually only live a few miles from this neighborhood and it's close to a Lowe's Foods. It's um, not very far from the mall and all sorts of other shopping. It's very close to the main road in Jacksonville, which is Western Boulevard. And that's pretty much where everything is. So um, very close to schools and um, really nice area. So this is just kind of an idea of what this part of the neighborhood looks like. And I'm going to turn around here in this cul-de-sac and then as we pass through the house, I'm going to give you just one more shot of what it looks like in the neighborhood coming out of it. When you come out of the neighborhood, you're going to be turning onto a road called Gum Branch Road. So if that gives you any indication of where we are on a map, that's, that's about where it is. All right, so driving down this road, I'm going to put it on pause for a minute and I'll be right back when we're closer to the house. Okay, so there's 139 Bridalwood again. So I'm just going to give you a view of what things look like as you're coming out of the neighborhood and turning on to Gum Branch. Let's see, nobody's behind me. Okay. This is a church right here at the very end of the road. The name of the church is Potter's House. Yes, that's it. And then this road intersects here with Gum Branch Road. So if you take a right on Gum Branch Road, you're going to be led back towards Jacksonville. If you take a left on Gum Branch Road that way, it's going to lead you towards Richlands. That is the Half Moon Fire Department right there. All right, and I'm just gonna give you, let's turn my windshield wipers back on here. Set this phone up here. This road is not lacking for churches, I will tell you that. There is Bethel Baptist Church right there. And then as we come up to this stoplight here, I know this is outside of the neighborhood, but I just, I love this part of Jacksonville, truthfully. It's just why I live over here. Um, Cause it's close to everything and it's just so easy to access anywhere that you want to go. But if you're going to take a left on the road where this stoplight is here, that's going to be Ramsey Road. And that will also intersect you with other areas um, of Jacksonville that you might want to get to kind of takes you over more towards the Piney Green side of town without having to drive all the way down Gum Branch. Um, it's just a nice little cut through. Um, and then if you have any school aged children, there's um, Summer Sill School is right up here on the right hand side. My grandbaby actually goes there. And this place here is really cool for mini golf. There's also a wedding venue over there called the Rustic Barn at Half Moon. 
it's not just a wedding venue. There's all sorts of event planning type stuff. There's a batting cage over there. They're doing a little bit of road work out here. Um, and then we're almost up to the area that I wanted to show you up here. So I'm just trying to give you an idea of how close you are to like shopping and you, know, you just need to run up, run up the road and go grab some milk or whatnot. I'm so sorry, I gave you the wrong information earlier about the right, the, the road to turn to uh, Somersill. This is actually the road right here that you turn to Somersill. I might have said it too soon. But that's, that's Somersill School Road. And there's a nice little coffee shop up here on the left called Milk Road. It has the best liege waffles you've ever had in your life. That's that place right there. Somebody had told me it was closing down soon. I really hope that that's not the truth. Gas station right up here on your right. And just past this, there's going to be a private Christian school on the left called Living Water. Um, there's a great Colombian restaurant that's in this little shopping center right here. It's called Liliana's. Oh my goodness, that, that place is amazing. She actually did my daughter's wedding cake and my grandson's uh, baby shower cake. Super fabulous little places all over the place here. I'd love to help, help you get to know Jacksonville a little bit better if you like. That's the private school I told you about. There's a handful of private schools in Jacksonville. And at this point, feel free to just kind of skip ahead a little bit. But on your left, there's a big area where there's going to be some probably townhouses or houses built in the future. And up there, that really big church with the R on it, that's called River of Life. That's actually my church. Check out, check them out on the web. We've got a great YouTube channel if you're interested in that. And this is um, a shopping center that's kind of being in the process of being built over there. There's a lot of empty spaces, but that's where Lowe's Foods is. There's, of course, the Dunkin' Donuts. And if you take a left at this light here, you're going to be going down Western Boulevard which is pretty much where everything is around here. So as you can see, this video is only better, this part of the video has only been about five and a half minutes to get to Western Boulevard. Not big, not a big deal at all. And base is not very far from here either, depending on which one you're going to. So anyway, guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be talking with you real soon.